Okay, so I have a lot of questions coming through my DMs that I ne can't necessarily like tap on a comment and record a video. So I've been thinking, um, I don't know how consistently I can get with this, but like a Friday Q and A uh, with the Zap Master uh, on here so that we can start answering some of these questions a little bit more publicly so that others that have those questions um, will also get them. Uh, a lot of times I like to have it where it is that comment so that you guys can know that like real people ask these questions, but okay, I'm not coming up with these out of nowhere. So of course real people are asking them. Um, so I've been thinking about it. Uh, I have really no idea what this is going to look like. I was thinking about probably like pre-recording some of them uh, so that they can consistently be in my drafts and I can kind of go through like, you know, 52 weeks of this um, and have the three minute videos, but we shall see. So. I'm gonna start off the conversation with a little bit longer of a video because it is probably one of the number one questions we get asked as electrologists in a consultation when people have done a little bit of research but not much research. And it really comes down to what is the difference between electrolysis, thermolysis, and blend? Now, this is where I can like really start to lean in and like deep dive into this conversation because there is a lot to say here. But in the same token, all permanent hair removal and permanent hair reduction achieves just that, okay? So whatever modality you go into, you're gonna have the strongest treatment with a technician that is most confident with it, if that makes sense. So even if your technician might not do all modalities, if they're very confident in a singular modality, trust them with that because they've mastered said modality, okay? So wanna put that in the back of your brain so that when I'm saying all this, you understand that I'm really taking a very neutral stance on this and I'm taking more of like an educator stance on this than I am like a favoritism. So when I started out in the world of electrolysis, I learned basically blend and multi-needle galvanic. Those were the two that in our practice we utilize all the time. And so I got really proficient in those. And it wasn't until, God, almost 10 years ago that I really started putting thermolysis into my practice more because for the longest time, thermolysis on the machines that we had was it was pretty spicy, okay? It was a little bit harder to handle um, back 20 years ago. But nowadays, it is so much easier to give safe and comfortable-ish treatments, no matter your modality, as long as you're really listening to like the client's body and the skin and how the hairs react and that kind of stuff. You can really provide a great treatment. So this is like all to say that like in my own practice, I am a technician that utilizes all three, okay? And I use them based on the case in front of me. Now with galvanized current, and this is like, when you hear of electrolysis, this is the original form, okay? So galvanized current is a chemical change. Basically, the galvanized current or DC is a continuous cycle of current and it changes the chemical structure of the salt water in our body into lye. And that chemically deconstructs the interior of the follicle. It's probably the most effective in the sense of like it doesn't take much to really get the job done but it's a very long process and so sometimes um, the length of the time that we're in the follicle becomes discouraging to clients okay so next up we have thermolysis now thermolysis is ac so um you have dc current direct current ac current oscillating current and the difference between these two is that thermolysis is thermal energy also on that filament delivered to the point of the filament to then break down using cauterization, so like rapid steaming of that follicle to break down the bottom two thirds. Both effective, but the difference between these two is the time in the follicle. Now, with thermolysis, because you have to do more protection of the skin for the heat factor, sometimes the overall process seems to be longer in our heads because we're going through it, but that overall process would be long either way because you're either longer inside of a follicle during treatment or you're doing more, um, reoccurring sessions in most cases. Now, I will tell you that I've, my effective kill rate has been the same pretty much everywhere. It's just, as I'm assessing clients, I'm going like, okay, what is the best one? Now, this is where you have the last one. This is blend. And blend is just that. Okay, it's a combination of both galvanized current and thermal current. The galvanized current creates that chemical change. The thermal current goes in there and excites that lye bubbles and creates a faster chemical reaction in that follicle and then it is achieved faster. So you have traditional galvanized current, which is slow. We're usually talking between like four to eight seconds on an individual hair if the person can tolerate 
higher milliampers. Okay, that's like the energy that we're providing. On the thermolysis side, if a person does not have a good response to like thermal energy being quick, right? That's where the discomfort comes in. So you have that varying change. Now on blend, I'm utilizing this because I've got the need for galvanized current. I've got like the structure of the hair that needs it. I have um, a person that who necessarily can't have a lot of heat energy into the area. And then I put a little bit of heat into that and it speeds up the overall process. So that four seconds now can turn to like four seconds or less, right? Or on the thermolysis side, instead of it being a quarter of a second, you might go from a quarter of a second. Now that you're in there for like a second and a half but with pulses. So when we're doing our selection of our energies, that's what we're really looking at. So as a technician, when I'm selecting an energy, for myself being a technician that does all of them, I'm usually assessing that based on what is in front of me with that client. Like what is going on behind the scenes that I need to address, okay? Now, strategically, a lot of times with my clients, especially if they can handle all modalities and they do have what we call terminal hair or thick hair, you will see me go in there and I will do my first few batches with thermolysis. So I'm gonna go in there, I'm gonna do a massive clearance, and this is usually after I've done laser. So massive clearance to whatever's left over the laser couldn't pick up. Then I go back in there and I incorporate blend, okay? And the reason I'm going there and incorporate blend on the next few sessions is I am trying to break down those hairs that we just got purged out, and when they come back in, hit them with a little bit more energy, but still like less heat so that the skin overall reacts uh, better to me, okay? And then those last few hairs that just won't die, okay? That's when I'll go in there and I will utilize galvanized current as a straight current. And this is usually like those few little chin hairs that just seem that they won't give it up. Those when I go and put in my single needle galvanic. And I do do multi-needle galvanic and so like, you'll see me incorporate that as well into my practice. But since there's not that many operators out there that do that, it's harder for, for me to justify why I'm utilizing that when somebody else can't really access it. However, there's supposed to be a new machine coming out very soon. And so we should see a resurgence of this machine back into the market. So when you're going through, I wouldn't shop based on modality unless you know you have a high contraindication that you couldn't do any galvanized current. Because galvanized current does run through the body because you're using you know, direct current, you are going to want to make sure that like there's no medical life-saving devices within your body um, and that your doctor has cleared you for a healthy treatment. Outside of that, pretty much any modality is a safe modality for you to encounter. The only time I would say outside of um, a life-saving device is if you're pregnant, okay? If you're an individual who is pregnant and um, it, we just won't, it's an unstudied area so we know since direct current goes through it, we don't want to test that ability on somebody who is creating life, right? So um, if your doctor signs off during thermolysis, absolutely most people will still zap you. You won't have any before and after care like anaphoresis, cataphoresis, but you can still have electrolysis. On the galvanized current side, not so much. And that's pretty much everything. I told you this was gonna be a long one because there was no way that I could just give that to you in three minutes. So if you stuck around this long, kudos, okay? And if you didn't, sorry. <laughs> but um, I'll try to keep the next one shorter. I'm hoping to do more of these for you um, so that we can start talking about some of the DMs that I'm getting and asking these big questions. I uh, will talk to you guys soon. Peace, love, and hair removal. And have a happy Friday, y'all. Bye.